Hi everyone. Just recently we released a video that was a collaboration with Sensei Justin Ichikawa of T.O. Westlake Karate in Thousand Oaks, California. And he also has an awesome YouTube channel called Sensei Ichi. I highly recommend visiting and subscribing to that channel as well. He's got some great content. Now we're doing a fun experiment together of sharing the basic techniques found in American Tang Soo Do versus the techniques found in American Kenpo Karate and then comparing the differences and similarities between the systems. Now we're keeping this civil. This is not a debate. This is not arguing which system is better. I mean, besides we all know it's a Maradote. Now this is a three-part series and you can find part one in the description below. If you have not seen it yet, I definitely recommend checking it out. So in this episode, Sensei Ichi, he's going to demonstrate some of his basic strikes that they have in American Tang Soo Do, and then we're going to analyze them. But don't forget to go to his channel to see the other half of this where I demonstrate our Kenpo strikes. So now, on the part two of American Tang Soo Do versus American Kenpo. Strikes! These are our basic to intermediate strikes that we teach are, again, white belts, yellow, orange, purple, and blue, which are our mid-range uh, belts that we have in our system. So snapping a wrist punch is a standalone punch. One hand goes by the face, the other hand goes by the ribs, just to practice basics. Uh, we're gonna be twisting our body forward and turning the hand over. We add the wrist snap just like we added in our basic blocks. So the hand starts, palm up by the ribs, we're gonna twist our body forward and snap out the punch. It's gonna be twisting out just like this and come all the way back. This is just a beginner way we teach our white belts, coming straight out and straight back. We do both right and left hand. We also have another technique called a thrusting reverse punch, which means instead of snapping it all the way out and back, we're going to shift our way forward and leave the punch out. At this point, we're gonna be pulling our hand back to the side. Uh, we only use this thrusting reverse punch in practice. We don't do it in actual practical application. We only use it to work on basics. So we're teaching the students how to thrust, how to follow through, how to pivot, how to twist, all those little really important nuances that would be in any kind of martial arts technique. The third punch that we teach is called a stepping center punch. So our front hand goes right out in front of us. We aim all these punches at solar plex level. We're gonna put our other pulling hand back by our side. We're gonna step forward and do our center punch right there to the solar plex. We do a stepping reverse punch instead of front hand matching front leg and the back hand matching the front leg, we're gonna do reverse. So we're gonna switch hands. So it'll be right hand out, left foot in the front. We step with our right and we punch with our left. That is called our stepping reverse punch. So we have something called a stepping side punch. Now I'm gonna be turning into the side stance, bending knees just like a horse stance. To do that side punch, we punch at shoulder level. Other strikes that we use on a more Tang Sudo based, we do have this spear hand, which is a very Japanese influence. Uh, a spear hand goes to the eye level. Uh, you could also throw it to the solar plexus, hit right in between the sternum and kind of dig into the body there. We also use it to go to the groin to grab into, you know, Lorena Bobbitt people. So that's what the spear hand is for. We also use a web hand. So we're using that web hand. We're aiming to the throw with the web hand. And it's going to be a web hand strike snapping just like the punch would. So uh, in terms of interactive, when I would use it, uh, let's say someone comes in and I do a block to defend it. So let's say I do the inside block this way and I grab it and then I come forward, boom, I'm doing the web hand. Or I come to the outside this way or inside this way, boom, I throw the web hand this way. So that's how we throw the web hand strike. It doesn't really go anywhere else. It's kind of meant to go there. So it's like Vader hitting right to the throat this way. We have a technique called a palm strike. People call it a palm heel strike as well. Using the muscles of the palm this way, hit right to the nose, you can hit to the midsection, hit to the groin. When we do these strikes, face is here, solar plexus is sideways, and groin is up. Same thing with spear hand. Spear hand here, spear hand here, spear hand here. So it changes up at every level, just to contour and align to the, where the body's uh, allowing us to strike to. Obviously, if I go like this, this is how you make a Venetian blind, but this way is not gonna work for the eyes unless someone's you know turned sideways, like something like that. Which, and they're going, what are you doing? Put my poke their eyes out. Then it would work. So I'd probably have to ask them a really peculiar question for that to work. So we also have ridge hands. Uh, when we use our ridge hand, we take our thumb and we're tucking it in. We're using the ridge of our hand here. Ridge hand is going to go to the temple. We can throw it to the throat or the neck. We can throw it to the bridge of the nose, to the ribs. It's a very universal strike. Ridge hand's a really good one. It goes everywhere. We use it in sparring. Grandmaster Pat Johnson once broke somebody's nose with a ridge hand uh, in a parking lot once because he was getting into a confrontation over a parking space. So he threw that ridge hand and hit right in the bridge of the nose and broke the guy's nose. So a ridge hand's a very great strike to use. So a little history fact for you. We use chops. So we have chops. We have an inverted version and then a regular version. We use the chop to strike to the neck. We use it to the temple. The same way the ridge hand would be. It's just the ridge hand is the top where the thumb is and the chop would be where the pinky is. So we're using our chop single-handedly or we can reinforce them using with two hands. We can also chop low with them too. We have an inverted version of that chop as well to where it doesn't only go straight. We flip it around this way. So if we're striking this way to the temple, this way to the bridge of the nose, this way to the body, we use the inverted chop that way as well. And the last strike that we have is called a bottom fist. 
We have a standalone bottom fist. We're hitting with the bottom of our fist. We use it down, which we call a hammer fist. Bottom fist, same kind of thing. We can also do a turning version of it. So if I'm turning this way, turning bottom fist right here. What it is is I'm taking the fist, four fingers, thumb across, and making a tight fist, hitting with the bottom muscle right here. Striking to the body, striking to the temple, striking to the face, the groin. We can use it inverted as well, striking to the groin this way. Single hand across, use it with a turn, use it with a jump. It's very universal. A lot of our techniques are, the basis of them are simple, one, two, three, but we also use them with different movements, steps, turns, drops, jumps, lunges, things like that. And every time we do our strikes, we're always using two hands, a striking hand and a pulling hand, and a blocking hand and a pulling hand. It allows us to get a nice balance in the shoulders, which gives us a little more power. We have a push and pull motion, which balances us out, so it gives us a lot more control over our body to throw faster, to throw harder, and have a better result. So those are our intermediate strikes that we have. So what do you think, Sensei? Are they similar or are they different? Your thoughts. I'll wait. Awesome stuff, Sensei. So there's a lot to look at here. Many similarities and plenty of differences as well. Let's start off with that reverse punch. We use it in almost the exact same way and we also sometimes call it the straight punch. Now we have the same methods of execution with the snapping and the thrusting. Ed Parker, the founder of American Kempo Karate, had a lot of boxing experience, so you'll often find some of those influences and concepts in the system. Now in our punches, our general rule is the front hand is closest to the target and can snap out and back quicker than the rear hand. So we'll use the reverse punch as a quick jab. We'll then use the rear hand for more of a power strike, such as a cross punch. So forehand is good for speed and jabbing and setup, and the rear hand is for power. Now I would like to bring up a punch that we use very often and it can be used many times to replace a reverse punch in many situations and that's the vertical punch. So essentially we'll take the reverse punch and we'll turn the hand vertically and we will use this instead and it helps us in stabilizing the strike and the wrist when you're punching above the shoulders. I personally like this technique. It's very powerful and it's also one of my favorites. It's got a lot of power behind it. Now the spear hand also exists in Kempo, very much in the same way in Tonksudo as you demonstrated it. We've got the high, the middle, and the low, and we even have an inverted spear that kind of, you know, kind of digs in under the ribs a little bit. And if you get good enough, you can grab the rib, snap it off, and stab them with it. Just kidding. Or am I? Now we don't really have the web hand to the throat. However, I am seeing that in Judo and Jiu Jitsu techniques with a lot of takedowns, but that's not really something we have in Kempo. In Kempo instead, most of our throat strikes are typically chops or half fists that we form with the hand so that we can kind of fit the target. And the throat is such a soft target, it doesn't take much force to damage it at all. Now the palm strike or palm heel strike is a staple in American Kempo. We use this one a lot as there's a lot of great applications. For the face, we often use it as a chin strike when it stretches them back and if we're really good, we can dig the fingers into the eyes. We also can use it raining down as a palm strike kind of clawing the face as we go. We sometimes also use the palm strike as a quick side, side strike to the, to the jaw or the temple. That one can be pretty devastating as well, so a quick snapping strike. Now we have the same palm heel strikes to the ribs and underhand as well and following the same finger alignment that you demonstrated. Fingers up for the face so that we can dig into the eyes. Fingers to the side for body strikes just in case if they bend over you don't want to buckle them against your fingers injuring yourself. And low strikes to the groin so we can, as you say, lorain the bob at them. We also have a variation in which we deliver a rear palm strike to the groin and we can grab and either tug upwards or we can step forward with a motion that I like to refer to as tearing off a paper towel. Now the rich hand strike, we do learn, but it's not used often. It is great for sparring though, and it's awesome for the facial strikes as you demonstrated, and it also fits very well. We will use it sometimes as a lifting groin strike. Although for our body shots, we typically opt for more of a driving forearm strike, which has a similar execution, but applies full backup mass into the strike. Our chops, when we use them, they're mainly to the neckline of the carotid artery. We have the outward chop, which is a deep sinking hammering strike, and then we have the inward chop, which is more of a, a whip-like strike. Now the bottom fist is what we call our hammer fist. This is another Kempo foundational strike. Our inward blocks, are treated as hammering strikes. We strike the arm. We often apply them with foot maneuvers to shuffle and hammer across the face, turning the head. So from side shot, we kind of go across the face, turn the head a little bit. We also can use this as a dropping strike to their nose. So say they grab and pull us, we can step forward and drop that hammering strike right there at the bridge of the nose. It's also good for like body shots. So if we get in a position where we can get behind them, maybe we pull them back off balance, we do a lot of shots to the chest or dropping shots to the collarbone. And also what you'll see a lot of times is our shots to the groin. The dropping hammer fist to the groin usually is accompanied by a leg buckle. We'll drop and get the hammer fist right in there. One of our 
one of my favorite shots too. It's really effective. You just drop and snap that hammer fist right to the groin. Now, as far as our movements when stepping with our punches, again, we take a little bit more of a boxer's approach with jabs, crosses, and hooks. We'll often add crossover foot maneuvers or shuffles when we need to control distance, and we put body, body mass behind the strikes, but we don't usually step through and hold strikes. We don't usually do a lot of side strikes that you see in a lot of traditional martial arts. We take more of a boxer's approach in our upper body strikes. Now we also have a few other strikes in Kempo that you didn't mention, and I'm really curious to know if you have them as well. We apply the back fist a lot, or a back knuckle strike. And then we can either do it to the face with kind of like a whip-like motion, or with a rotational strike to the abdomen. So that's one of my favorites as well, and it's a very effective strike. We also have a lot of emphasis on elbow strikes to the face, to the body shots, we also have that vertical punch I mentioned before, and that vertical punch can also be kind of inverted to like more of an uppercut type strike to the body. And as far as close range strikes, we have a whole slew of what we call insert strikes. And this includes everything from eye hooks and gouges, pinches, even bites, elbows, wherever you can insert them when you have an opportunity, you get a strike in there. Uh, one of my instructors always had this term that if we're gonna put our hand out, so if we're gonna do a palm heel strike or a punch, hand comes out, we're gonna grab, pinch, rip, whatever, we're gonna pull something back with it. It's really fascinating to me that even though we each have two hands, two feet, most of the systems share a lot of the same basic movements, but it's really cool to explore the different ways of thinking and execution. We all take different paths to get to the same destination. Thank you so much for sharing, Sensei. And everybody, please be sure to go to his channel right now and watch the other half of this episode in which I go into the Kempo Strikes in more depth and Sensei Ichi analyzes them. The link is below in the description and above, so please go check out his awesome martial arts channel. Thank you so much for watching. We've got one more of these left and it's gonna be comparing the basic kicks between Tong Sudo and Kempo. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and go to Sensei Ichi's channel and subscribe there. Click on the bell icon so that you'll be alerted when this new episode drops. Thank you so much.